Okay, so here we are with the Wavegrove Islander compressor. So with so many compressors out there, um, what is it about this one that I think is worth reviewing? Well, quite a bit. Um, this is a Verimoo style compressor and there's quite a few, quite a, a number of other Verimoo style compressors out there, plugins. And this one sounds different than all of the other ones. Um, but there's a lot more going for it than just that. So what I first noticed with this one was that when I put it on things like the two bus or the drum bus, I got an immediate just improvement in the sound in ways that I would not heard before from any other plugin. So even with light amounts of compression or heavy amounts of compression, it wasn't just the compression I was hearing. Um, there was just elements of uh, the music that were becoming enhanced in ways that I I'd not heard before. Yeah, there's something different about this plugin. So before we go any further, um, if you find these videos useful, please do like the video, subscribe, and if you can press the thanks button, it really helps this uh, channel keep going and it's greatly appreciated. So I started chatting to the developer, Juicy, I hope I pronounced your name right, um, about helping me understand more about what's going on here. And I could immediately see that the reason was that it's really quite complex what's going on under the hood here. It's not just a simple add a preset, you know, a set of harmonics here and a preset curve there and so forth. It's a lot closer to what goes on in really high-end hardware where everything's kind of interacting with everything else in a certain way um, and even more importantly interacting with the signal the uh, transient and volume envelope of the signal the frequency contact of the signal everything's interacting with that and things are interacting with each other within the actual device and that's exactly what's going on with this and I think that's probably why I'm hearing a difference with this compressor compared to any other compressor that I've tried and why I'm getting those kind of enhancement qualities um, that I, again, not getting out of any one plugin, but maybe would get out of a number of plugins by tweaking a lot of stuff. Here it's just happening. Um, and it's reflected in the way the thing works in the sense that it's kind of impossible to make it sound bad. It's not like with a lot of plugins that even really great ones, you're kind of dialing in and tweaking in things to get something good and then you can get something really great. But you do have to dial it in to get something that works. With this one, I mean, everything works. It always sounds good. It's just lots of different flavors of good. Some high-end pieces of hardware are like that. Um, again, I'm not like a hardware uh, fanatic at all. I learned my trade on entirely on hardware and, and I mixed, you know, for the first whole section of my mixing career. It was all on hardware, including on tape. So I know what hardware is like, and it's not the panacea that people make it out to be. I mean, it doesn't all sound good at all. It goes from everything from sounding pretty crap to sounding like quite good to sounding really amazing. And, you know, that goes across all types of hardware. It, it's, and it depends on the source, you know, what a piece of hardware that might sound really great on one source doesn't necessarily sound really great on another. Um, so it's not like I'm thinking, well, hardware is the kind of the holy grail. I don't think it is, but I do think there are some really amazing sounding pieces of high end hardware that do sound amazing. And I think partly what's going on there is a lot of non-linear interaction between different parameters, between different components and the way they interact with the signal. And I think some hardware developers, so, sorry, some software developers are now starting to understand that and bring that level of emulation into software. And this is what we're hearing in a plugin like this. And there are a few others out there, but um, there's, to my ears, a noticeable difference between just a kind of static like let's add a set of harmonics to this and a certain curve to this and something like this plugin where there's all kinds of interaction going on under the hood. So enough said on that. I'm going to go through the controls. Um, but first I'm just going to 
play a bit of this so you can just hear what it sounds like. I'm going to start with it out. This is on the drum bus. Um, I'm going to start with it out and then, then bring it in. And you can see just before I do that, it's, I've got some dry signal, some wet. So this is a parallel compression. So you can hear right away that it's quite a profound change on the whole sound of the drum kit. Um, it's bringing up all kinds of tonal elements. The sound of the snare is, is really remarkably different. Even though, you know, there's quite a bit of dry signal in there. So you're not getting, you're not losing the transients, but you're really getting uh, a, a lot of tonal stuff going on. So. Let's have a look at the controls, then I'm going to show you a couple of other settings and then we can start playing around with the controls to hear what they do. So we've got a wet and a dry control here. And just so it's not that clear in the manual, but just so you know, this happens, these controls are after the compressor. So um, this control though does add some harmonic content, not a lot, but a bit. So. Um, this is your wet dry mix and you can also use this one or both of them in combination to gain stage like a level match uh, like a makeup gain type thing now I think it would be good if they had another control which is just an overall output clean output for the whole plugin so that you could really level match a bit quicker and easier and I spoke to Juicy and um, they said they'd consider doing that, but you can do it with these two controls. Um, so that's there, that there, and then we've got the threshold control. And like with very mood compressors, it's got a, a, um, a variable knee and threshold depending on how far the signal is going um, into the threshold. But what you've got here is also a calibration level. And this is a really important control. It's easy to miss because it's just up here at the corner, but it's actually really important because this drives the signal into the circuitry. And just, I didn't mention this, but actually this is based on a actual boutique hardware compressor. It's modeled after that, but they've added a lot of extra things that the hardware compressor doesn't have. So this calibration level, this drives the emulated circuitry and it makes the levels go up. You can see it's compressing more as you turn this up. But also, if you move the threshold to the right, lowering the threshold, moving it to the right clockwise lowers the threshold, you also see more compression happening. But if you set the compression level to say 2 dB using the threshold with the calibration level, you know, at say 12 o'clock, as opposed to raising the threshold, and driving it more here so that you still get 2 dB gain, it's not going to sound the same. Because what this level control does in terms of harmonic content is different than what the threshold control does. This threshold control increases the harmonic content a lot as you turn it to the right, lowering the threshold. But the level calibration does as well, but in a different way. So just really worth realizing that these two interact and they're not doing the same thing. Okay, so now we've got feedback and feed forward. I'm not going to go into details about this, but basically it's uh, what the detector circuit is looking at, the signal coming in or the signal after it's been through the compressor, and it changes the character of the compressor a lot. Then we've got attack and release controls. Um, they also uh, change the harmonic patterns content a lot, um, not just when you get really fast as any compressor will, um, but even as you move them to different positions, they, they change it and interact with the threshold. Okay, so here we've got a side chain um, where you can go from no side chain to a high pass at 75, a high pass at 150, 
so that you know it's not going to be compressing, reacting to the base frequencies as much, which is very useful. Gain link, what this does is if you move one of these controls, it moves the other in the opposite direction, which helps you level match. And these are the basic controls. We've got two sides here, a left and a right, that do the same thing. Um, you can link them up here with control link or unlink them. Very useful. Um, and now the center section. So this is interesting. It, it's got a mixture of kind of utilities and, and interesting saturation uh, controls. So up at the top, we've got stereo link. So this means that both sides, nothing to do with control, the parameter link, but it, it basically means the detection circuit on both sides is going to be driven by the same thing. They're both going to react to uh, the same signal at the same time. So you've got like a mono sum, I'm guessing, of the input signal that they both get. When you do a mono, they're acting independently, left and right. So that's really useful. And you can switch from stereo to mid-side, so you can get the same kind of independence between stereo or mid-side. Uh, or if you don't have them independent and you're mid-side, obviously you can, can address the, these differently as well. So there's a lot of flexibility and variation there. Um, just to finish off on the utilities down here, we've got a delta control. You can listen to the what the compressor is doing. So it takes away everything but the bits that are being changed by the compressor. That's pretty useful. Uh, power button just bypasses. Here, you get oversampling up to 16 times oversampling. But looking at Plugin Doctor, I'm not seeing a lot of al aliasing anyway. But obviously, if you want to reduce it, you can. So that's really great. Um, now, we've got saturation controls here. So these control the saturation of the compressed signal, the wet signal, and this controls the dry signal. So the dry signal isn't necessarily 100% dry if you use this control. You can add saturation, but it's not the same kind of saturation as the wet. Now that's partly because the wet saturation is interacting with other parameters and with the way the compressor is actually working. You've got a lot of interaction. You've got interaction with the input signal, the transients, the frequencies, the level of the input, and you've got interactions with the way the compressor is working around that and the other controls. So an example of that is this temp control here. If you've not got any saturation going on, from these controls. I mean, there's saturation even without these, but these add more saturation. This temp control doesn't really do much, but as you turn up the saturation, it doesn't add more saturation in itself. My understanding is that, from speaking to the developer, is that this changes how the sa saturation interacts with the way the compressor works. So we're talking about some pretty complex levels of interaction here, like happens in hardware. And all of this works together with the threshold control. So, you know, you're not going to hear this temp doing that much in some settings. In other settings, you really hear it changing the sound and it thickens it up. Now, the other thing that this saturation control does, apart from changing the, the way the harmonics happen in a kind of dynamic way, is that it adds, like, almost as if it's a high shelf as you turn it up higher. It isn't, according to Juicy, it's not a high shelf, but it's harmonics that are emphasized that create something that sounds a bit like a high shelf. So you get more high frequency content as you turn this up, which is actually very useful, I find, uh, especially on drums. The dry signal also adds some of that, but it's more in the one to two K range. So you're getting quite a lot of stuff going on here. And finally, you've got a clipper. Um, now, clippers are used for bringing up your overall level. Could be useful in a mastering situation. I don't tend to use clipping for my when I master because of the kind of music I do. It's not about getting it super loud. It's about preserving quite a lot of dynamic range. But clippers can be really useful if you need to get your signal louder. And this is a very nice sounding clipper. I've had to play around with it. It sounds great. Um, so 
that's a nice addition for some types of uh, mastering work. Okay, so I think that covers everything. Um, so let's now have a bit more of a listen. We had a listen to this this one here. So let's try a different setting. Uh, this one here is not parallel. It's just the wet signal. Um, and it's got a slightly slower attack. It's sort of a bit faster than medium and a very fast re uh, release. And it's got the side chain in. So it's not going to be triggering from the bass as much. And some saturation here, uh, some temp control on there. So let's have a listen to this. Start with it out and then bring it in. So it's really grabbing, smacky um, sound, and it's very jelly. It's kind of really pulling the whole thing together nicely. Um, I find this compressor is very good at giving a kind of weight and thickness, a kind of gel, um, a kind of punchy weight to things. Very nice for that. So let's try another one here, another setting and then we can start messing about. Okay, so here's another one with some parallel going on. It's sort of even amount of parallel compression. So let's have a listen to this one out and then I'll bring it in. So even though it's like even amounts of wet and dry, you're really getting a lot of more low end, a really th solid, punchy, thick low end. No um, side chain here. So it's grabbing the low end and yet really thick and punchy sounding. Um, and yeah, a lot of uh, thickness to the whole sound and a lot of um, tone coming out. One of the things I'm finding is that it's really great at bringing out the tone uh, of the drums in a way that, again, I've not heard from any of the compressor. By the time you're getting that kind of tone, it's sounding pretty squashed. Or if you've let through the transients, it's sounding, you know, overly transient heavy, overly smacky, which might be what you want. But what's great about this one is it's not giving me any of those um, massive changes in, in transients, and yet it's bringing the tone out. So just have another listen here to the sound, not just of the kick, but the snare. So you're really getting that lower beefy tone from the snare being brought out here. Um, pretty remarkable for a compressor to be able to do that without the thing sounding completely squashed. Um, now obviously this is a parallel thing and you've got fast attack, fast release, so that is the kind of effects you're going to get from that. But it it's just not giving me that massive crush thing that you would normally get from a compressor like this. Uh, a compressor in a parallel situation like this. It's just bringing out a lovely, uh, low, beefy, solid, uh, weighty uh, sound. So pretty cool, pretty amazing. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is start here and start working on messing around with some of the controls so that you can hear the differences. Bring these down to dry and uh, yeah, I'll leave that on stereo link for the moment.
So, yeah, the difference is pretty dramatic when you bypass it. Um, it just yeah, sounds really great. Pretty much anything you do with this sounds good. But it's so easy to dial in a really uh, great sounding um, drum bus setting on this. Let's now move over to, let's put it on the snare. Yeah, again, it would be nice to have that output control because even this all the way up here with this amount of compression, I'm not able to level match it. Whereas if we had an output control that gave a, like a, a lot of leeway there, um, that would be useful. Not a big deal, but just a, it would be a nice addition. Okay, so now let's move on to the two bus. So immediately it tightens everything up, gels everything together, and you get that really solid, punchy, low end, um, yet impressive as a two bus mastering compressor. So 
fiddle around a bit more with the controls. So again, really gels it, tightens it, gives that low end, that solid punchy uh, sound that's always nice to have at your fingertips. Um, and yeah, adds a, quite a lot of presence in the, in, the, in the upper mids when you crank this saturation, um, but not in a harsh way at all. It really sounds nice, very natural sounding, really, really nice. Um, so, yeah, um, you could spend hours messing with this and getting just loads and loads of great different but different results um, on the two bus, particularly I think this shines on drum bus and the two bus, um, but obviously good on, on pr pretty much anything. So I hope you found this useful. Um, if you did, please do give the video a like and ring the bell and subscribe and um, if you can press the thanks button uh, and help this channel going, that's really appreciated. So, I uh, hope to see you next time.